has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Snakes, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's amazing, Carver High. Look at the difference. <laughs> oh, the humanity. I think that it's it's happened. Something's happening in a positive manner here today, Carver High. Getting involved here at the last minute. <laughs> it seems like it. Uh, things are turning around for you. There's no question about that uh, in, a, <laughs> in a rapid way, that's for sure. You called me an uh, Oompa as- Loompa before, <laughs> which was very degrading. Uh, it was very degrading indeed. Uh, as we start the second hour here uh, of C to C, I have a couple more things left for you uh, when it comes to the basketball and uh, Scheffler uh, just parred that hole. So minus eight still for Scotty Scheffler. Uh, a Berg's now four behind him. He's playing with him out there. I, can some of these guys make a run and get within one or two shots of him before the end of the day, please uh, make it a little interesting for us. This weekend out at Jack's tournament. Uh, let's I finish put last a night. Bocce jinx on him. I hate him. I wish ill will on him. And then he shank apotamuses this drive right into the woods. Yeah, let's hope so. Uh, that from your lips to God's ears. Uh, last thing for tonight, and then I want to give you the numbers for game two on Sunday. Uh, here's Luca. I told you earlier, he didn't really have much to say. Uh, <laughs> you got to ask a couple of questions in the post game. The answers were pretty short. I don't remember. Uh, just a little you lose or you win. Uh, first of four, uh, we got to focus on the next game. Does, does that give you guys confidence, though? Of course. You, know, you want me to say we have no confidence? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to hear you say it. You know, it's good for our stories. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he seems like he cares a whole lot about your stories. Like, And yeah. first of all, no one reads <laughs> stories anymore except me. I'm the only loser that gets a newspaper around here. I get two of them. Uh, I'm the only one, I, literally, I read all day. Maybe it's my last vestige of hope in life, Carver High, that I don't get for Alzheimer's if I read a lot. I've always believed if you stimulate the mind and not with weed, uh, that you might have potential to keep your faculties amongst yourselves. I guess you would have a little bit of a better chance of it by doing that. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, here we go. Game two will be on Sunday night in Boston. Uh, right now, so it was a six and a half last night. Celtics smash them, so it goes to seven and a half for Sunday night. Game number two, two fourteen and a half will be the total. Well, I mean, uh, I'm scared to death uh, to bet on them uh, again. I already lost. I-, I already lost at six and a half. Now you're giving me uh, what seven? Seven and a half? Seven and a half. It's not enough. I, I think it's not enough. I think they're going to lose that game too. And they won't cover seven and a half. I think you need uh, at least eight and a half, nine, in my opinion, for it to be close. They got it to eight. And they uh, got blown out again after that. So that was as close as they ever got it was eight. So in my opinion... Uh, seven and a half just isn't enough. And that's why I think that's the number that they got it down uh, that, to eight. And that was as close as they got. That was it. Uh, that was as close as they got. That's for sure. Uh, for the most bet player prop, obviously we have a couple days here. Uh, there's going to be a lot of player props bet between now and Sunday night, but I guess last night, Scotty, immediately everyone ran right to the window to get back on the Porzingis train after uh, game number one. So they're going for Porzingis. In game number two, as you see, over his points total, uh, what is that, over the 15 and a half, uh, they're going to go to the window with Porzingis. Everybody's running there already. For him to go over 15 and a half points in game two, I won't be surprised at all. I mean, he did that easily. He did it easily, uh, that's for sure. Even in limited minutes, he was able to fly through that number. As far as the series goes, Celtics now minus 450. Up 1-0. Mavericks plus 340. That's actually moved a little bit from this morning. 340 now for the Mavericks, uh, if you think that they can still win this series. 
Well, I'm not willing to hand the Larry to the Celtics yet. They've got to go to Dallas. And I think the uh, Mavericks will win in Dallas. So in my opinion, this is going to be five, six, or seven, no matter what. I think that, you know, Boston can win game two at home Sunday. And then I think they go down to Dallas and have problems. Uh, I know they always win on the road. That's how good they've been. They, they Game threes, they annihilate teams uh, in their building. I don't, frankly, feel that's happening against Dallas uh, at the American Airlines Center. I think the Mavericks and Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving will win both games in Dallas. Mm, that would be outstanding. Uh, that would be great if we could please get that, Scotty. That would be awesome. I might jump back in then. You got, you're giving me some confidence here. I got, I'm a little down after last night. I expected a little bit more out of the Mavs uh, in game number one. Hopefully they can give me a little bit of hope on Sunday night, at least keep it close. Uh, a few other things for you here, NBA, and then we'll get to the baseball stuff. Uh, Dan Hurley, as you talked about with Gabe, received a strong contract offer from UConn amid these Laker rumors. He's meeting today with Polenka and Jeannie Buss. Uh, you mentioned he's probably going to spend uh, the weekend out there. Why fly coast to coast uh, if you don't need to? Uh, but UConn uh, is going to try and give him more money, which uh, many believe is what he is after all along by doing this. Yeah, I actually don't believe for one minute that UConn can pay him more than uh, Jeannie Buss can. I think the Lakers can pay him more money. I think they, uh, you know, I think UConn could match uh, a long-term deal. I think they could do that, but they couldn't match the money. And this is, to me, about, frankly, it's about Jeannie's ability to close the deal I think that her father would have closed. And I mean that with all due respect. Like, I like Jeannie. I respect her. I think she's been a phenomenal businesswoman. And she's great at what she does. But her dad, if you know anything about uh, Dr. Buss, I mean, this would have been over already. This would have been by Friday afternoon, it would have been hammered on the golf course or at some club or at some five star restaurant drinking and smoking and just partying. And there would have been women everywhere. He wouldn't even care if his wife was there. There would have been Shangri-La. The deal would have been done already. The fact that they've made it through Friday without a deal uh, is to me, frankly, she's got. I'd say 24 to 36 hours to stick a fork in him and, and hook him. Uh, right now, she can't catch the fish. She's got to get this guy. And I think the key to it for her is to give him total power. And she doesn't want to do that. And I think one of the mistakes that, frankly, my opinion is that the mistake she's made is that Rob Palenka and Kurt Rambis have made a lot of mistakes with the Lakers. They've hired seven coaches six really full-time, one interim over the last how many years? This is seven. This would be the eighth coach. They have butchered every decision they made. What she needs to do is finally lay down the law. You're done making decisions. We're giving Dan Hurley all the power to make all the decisions. He's in total control. If they give him total control and a long-term deal with the most money of any coach in the NBA, I think he'll sign the deal. Uh, Very possible indeed, and we'll see if there's anything else with that over the weekend or within the next couple of hours. Uh, A couple of other things. TNT's negotiating for a fourth NBA TV rights package. So there was the three that was going to come out. TNT had lost theirs, it looks like, that they're going to to NBC. And now they're negotiating to get a fourth lesser package, which would be nowhere near the games that are on the other ones. Uh, We'll see what happens with that. Adam Silver had his yearly uh, State of the Union uh, before Game 1 yesterday, Scotty, and he didn't really want to discuss any of the media rights deals. Uh, but he did say that expansion is next on the agenda for him in the league. Uh, so they got to make sure they get more teams in the league. They'll work on that. Well, what was interesting, I thought, was expansion outside the U.S. and Canada. He, mm. he doesn't want, uh, it appears to me, he doesn't want it in the States. So what does that mean, London? Uh, I mean, what are they doing? Like, it sounds to me like they want to go somewhere else outside of North America.
Anybody remembers that famous chip in that Tiger Woods hit at 14, long and left after he tried to go for the full flop, leaves it short, then chips in for par, goes on and wins. You know, that you can't miss left there. And it's all you're hitting off the tee is a full iron. You're hitting full iron into the fairway, and you're hitting a 138 yard fade pitching wedge. And you can either hit it on top of a minivan or you can't. Only on Sports Grid. Uh, 1.81 goals against average, 9.20 save percentage. He's been. He's also six and two in his last eight road starts as well. The Oilers are. Um, the Oilers are a great road team. I actually think it's an advantage for them that they don't have home ice. That potentially four of the games are on the road. We've seen 56 percent of the games this year in the NHL playoffs. The road team is actually one. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. You're going a little deep bomb hunting here. We don't care that we have the one heavy favorite with Rory, a couple other guys like Fleetwood and Tagala, etc. You're going to go a little deeper down the board. This course, I think, is going to play a little bit more to the wedges. They have, um, what they did is they've renovated it to basically block off some of the, the bombing alleys for these guys. They've narrowed the fairways. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Garrett Cole is getting ready to come back, too. I, I guess this, look, they've played great without him, but you're not going to say to Garrett Cole, look, don't come back. I mean, it's a ridiculous conversation to have. They're not going to take any unnecessary chances. And look, they're at the point where they, they have a lead. They certainly are going to make the playoffs, I would say, barring some sort of complete collapse. And that's all it takes. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. You know, the one thing that I wanted to ask you about in terms of expansion was, you know, I think at some level in less than five years, I believe Vegas will have an NBA team. And I think, you know, uh, LeBron James will be part of the ownership group of that franchise. And he's literally admitted it. He said that that's like one of his goals, right? So I don't know when you hear Silver talk about, we want it somewhere else besides the U.S. and Canada, uh, that they want to go somewhere else. I don't know what that means. Mexico, I don't know if that means Europe, uh, London, uh, Spain. I don't know. Like, the game has uh, grown so significantly, you know, globally uh, that, you know, I, I just, how do you feel about them you know, crossing the pond to play NBA games for uh, seven months. Uh, I think it's absolutely awful, uh, to be quite honest with you. I, I don't I don't want anything to do with it. I don't think that any of these leagues uh, should be crossing the pond for regular. I know that the NFL's discussed this as well. Having a team in London, they play enough games over there, I guess, at this point, uh, as they're trying to make like a training ground to see how often they can go back and forth. I, I can't stand it, Scotty, to be quite honest. This, this It is what it is. I mean, do you have uh, – have you seen uh, – so, you know, these soccer leagues in Europe, which are massive, massive money makers, the Champions League, the Premier League, oh, they got teams in the United States, Scotty? No. No. Uh, they, they don't. And there's a reason why they don't, uh, because it wouldn't work. And it wouldn't work if you put an NBA team in Paris, France, or London, England, or wherever you want to go, or an NFL team for that matter. I think it's a bad idea. I'm not saying you want to play your one-off game over there like you do now. Sure. Uh, go ahead. Having what a full-time team there. Um, I, I mean, look, uh, all we hear now is how how, how many problems there are uh, down right. there, right? The cartel. I mean, like, all we have are these problems uh, down in Mexico City. So you want to go and I don't know how many guys you're going to have uh, – Running to sign down there. Uh, if they put a team in Mexico City, I'm, I'm not sure how well that will go. But I, I think you're fine where you are. I think we know where the expansion is going to be. Vegas is going to get a team. And haven't they been saying they want to go back to Seattle? 
yeah, uh, and fix that problem. <laughs> Screw so, everybody so, I mean, else. Look, enough with this nonsense of, of having teams in. And, and look, if you want to go Canada again, I got no problem with that. They obviously had Vancouver and they lost it. I don't know uh, if that would work out. M- Montreal, something like that, to have a second team in Canada. I wouldn't have an issue there. But going across the pond, absolutely not. Uh, I want nothing to do with that, Scotty. Nothing. All right, fair enough. Uh, as far as the other stuff uh, for you for the NBA, we're pretty much done with it. Uh, Bloomberg's going to join A-Rod and Michael Lloyd. Who cares? They're, not, they're never going to get the other guy out anyway. Uh, this uh, this uh, Zachary Richet, well, who's the name of this guy, Scotty, who's been climbing the court now, this is the guy, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that Coach has been talking up for the past few weeks, That's right? right? Has Coach been talking this guy up, and he's basically moved the board himself? <laughs> In not so many words, yes. That's the, yeah. that's the player that Coach is selling as the best uh, choice for number one for the Atlanta Hawks. And you cannot get an agreement uh yet from anyone in in the league there's so many uh split down the middle as to whether it's sar rishishe uh going uh number one and so i don't think anybody really knows at all i think that rishishe uh certainly puts up bigger numbers uh than sar but sar is a seven footer that they believe uh these people you know they don't think now they think down the road they think you know Five years from now, he's going to be an absolute badass. Whereas Wembenyama was immediately, uh, uh, you know, he was transcendent. The guy was just uh, one of a kind, right? So there's not anyone like him and neither are any of these players. So more along the lines of an NFL type draft pick where, believe it or not, they used to draft him and say, we want to get him good by year four. Yeah, uh, and now it's a, it's a whole different ball game, especially when you have a draft like this where uh, you don't have uh, a Wembenyama. Uh, you don't have uh, Zion, somebody that uh, everybody's falling over to go ahead and try and be the one to take over. And finally, uh, Caitlin Clark's arrival to the WNBA has sparked massive WNBA betting growth, massive betting growth, kind of like everything else, kind of like how it sparked uh, massive ticket sales, Massive uh, television ratings, uh, massive actually people uh, paying attention, kind of the same way. It's also sparked massive betting growth. What a correlation, Scotty. Well, I think, you know, uh, I know that there's this gigantic over, like in some states, over 200% increase in the amount of uh, wagering on the WNBA. So the proof's in the pudding. If, If it is what it is, and that's what they're, uh, betting on uh, in those numbers in droves, that's great for the sports books. Uh, I don't see how that benefits uh, women's basketball at all, uh, frankly, or the NBA that uh, tons of people are betting on it. We've already seen uh, betting scandals in the NBA, and I'm sure that betting scandals will follow in the WNBA. Uh, the reality is all it does is make the sports books more money. The more they talk about how many people are betting on it. Now, listen, I'm going to be honest with you, straight up. I'm not here to lie. Uh, The the only person I know that bets on that is Coach. The only person I know on the face of the earth that bets on the WNBA is Coach Young. That's it. I don't don't bet on on that. And you know how I I, I tell you like it is. I don't bet on animals. And I don't bet on chick basketball at at this point. And I'll, I'll tell you why. I don't know enough about it. Like, I know all of the best players in the league. I, you know, maybe the top 10 players in the league, but I don't know anybody else. So I think it puts me at an extreme disadvantage as a better. If you're betting on, this is the same theory as betting on Korean baseball around here. I will never forget starting my job and then COVID started on SportsGrid and every host on this network was betting 35 Korean baseball bets a day and ping pong and cricket. It's embarrassing. I'm sorry. I don't I don't bet on things I don't know about. So you can take that all the way to the bank any way you want. Yep.
Anybody remembers that famous chip in that Tiger Woods hit at 14, long and left after he tried to go for the full flop, leaves it short, then chips in for par, goes on and wins. You know, that you can't miss left there. And it's all you're hitting off the tee is a full iron. You're hitting full iron into the fairway, and you're hitting a 138 yard fade pitching wedge. And you can either hit it on top of a minivan or you can't. Only on Sports Grid. Uh, 1.81 1 goals against average, 9.20 save percentage. He's been. He's also six and two in his last eight road starts as well. The Oilers are. Um, the Oilers are a great road team. I actually think it's an advantage for them that they don't have home ice. That potentially four of the games are on the road. We've seen 56 percent of the games this year in the NHL playoffs. The road team is actually one. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. You're going a little deep bomb hunting here. We don't care that we have the one heavy favorite with Rory, a couple other guys like Fleetwood and Tagala, et cetera. You're going to go a little deeper down the board. This course, I think, is going to play a little bit more to the wedges. They have, um, what they did is they've renovated it to basically block off some of the, the bombing alleys for these guys. They've narrowed the fairways. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Garrett Cole is getting ready to come back, too. I, I guess this, look, they've played great without him, but you're not going to say to Garrett Cole, look, don't come back. I mean, it's a ridiculous conversation to have. They're not going to take any unnecessary chances. And look, they're at the point where they, they have a lead. They certainly are going to make the playoffs, I would say, barring some sort of complete collapse. And that's all it takes. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Time to talk some baseball, and it doesn't get any better than uh, this weekend in the Bronx. Uh, it does not get better than this weekend in the Bronx, as you will have the Yankees and the Dodgers getting together in the boogie down for a Let's big go. three-game series, uh, all-night cool. games, prime time, national television. Everyone's excited. Before I get there and even to anything else from last night, let me give you all the particulars now with Juan Soto, who, of course, left that game last night for the Yankees. Yankees beat the Twins like they always do uh, in that game. Uh, everyone who left the game after that rain delay uh, ended up being uh, some inflammation, Scotty, uh, for him in the elbow. So everything is looking uh, pretty good so far. MRI suggests that he's going to be okay. Uh, looks like uh, he's going to start medication. He's considered day-to-day. -day. Boone said there were some anxious moments uh, a couple minutes ago. They do not expect Soto to have an IL stint. In fact, Scotty Boone said it's possible that Soto will be available off the bench as a pinch hitter tonight. So he's not going to be in the starting lineup, but it's possible that he could even swing the bat if needed late in the game. So that, considering how most Yankee fans uh, <laughs> were not feeling so good last night, that is some size for relief for them this afternoon. Can we get, like, the diesel to send him over some icy hot or something and just rub it on yeah. there and then get out there and hit a home run into the short porch? What is the problem? Uh, yes, I think that that's probably something uh, that we would like to have seen. Uh, but <laughs> inflammation with the forearm, uh, as we should say, uh, everything is good to go. Uh, the diesel does have a lot of icy hot, uh, and I'm sure that he would be able to help him with that. Here's the one thing that... That worries me. Now, look, everybody's all smiles. Uh, Boone's laughing and going, I'm not even going to play to Boone from last night because Boone last night was more of the the typical, like, I don't know, uh, doom and gloom. Right. But as great as this is, let's remember something. Last year, they let Anthony Rizzo play for a month and a half with a concussion before they figured it out. Last year, it took him a month to figure out uh, Judge with the toe uh, when he rammed into that wall against the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium. They haven't been very good at this stuff. I'm glad all their imaging and their MRIs and all their stuff tell them that everything's good. And, God, Scotty, I'm knocking on wood right here while I'm talking to you. I hope that's the case. 
but it's hard for me to believe them because they've been wrong a lot lately. So let's just hope that everything's good. Yeah, you know, it's a lot like uh, I played today, and I've had like uh, I told you, I've I've got like a torn, uh, a little tear for sure in my rotator. I've had both of my rotators operated on and labrums, and I have uh, I think a new tear and a and a problem there. And so today I'm playing against this guy, and he's like a hundred mile an hour guard. This guy is so fast; he just scored five times. All I mentioned his name. And all I know is he was running up the side and the, the, it's a box gym. There's only padding on the wall. There's no, there's nowhere outside out of bounds. It's a wall with padding on it. And he started, he stole a ball and started up the sideline hauling ass. And he was going to go right around me and score. And I was having none of it. And I just did a full on, uh, <laughs> you know, Nystrom into the wall. I gave him the full shoulder. And it tore my shoulder off and I felt it just tear. And uh, you can tell when you got a problem, the elbow, the shoulder tear, you know, it's going to be a problem for you. And now we got to see if Soto, uh, if his numbers start dropping off over the next few weeks, because then you'll know he's got something wrong with him. Hopefully the medication works uh, and they will be good to go after that. I always Uh, recommend eating pills. Uh, well, uh, there you go. Uh, I don't think he can do that. He's going to go and potentially pinch it tonight, but, uh, we'll see how that goes for him. The left forearm discomfort looking good. Uh, Yankees did beat the twins eight, five Torres had a big two run double. They, uh, they took care of business. They beat the twins every game this year. Like they always do. Dodgers beat the pirates 11 to seven last night. Uh, so the Buccos were going for the sweep Scotty. Unfortunately, they were not able to finish that off. Although I have to bring this up. I know they lost. That home run that O'Neill Cruz hit, that Cruz missile, 462 feet into the Allegheny. Whoa, that was yeah. a lookout uh, right there. I know it was garbage time, but that was a lookout from Cruz. He, he's feast or famine. He strikes out a lot. But when he gets a hold of one, uh, and, you know, same thing when he throws the ball at short over to first. He, he really throws it. And when he hits, uh, the ball jumps off of his bat. But he strikes out a lot. But I still like him. Uh, I will give you all of tonight's information later on in Coast to Coast for the games this evening in Major League Baseball. against one another right and being able to get a little bit of juice can sig i found to be a little interesting believe me all the rhombuses and parallelograms are constantly trying to search and find out those things every day it's one of the battles that you use you know as you expand the menu you encounter new battles game time decisions only on sports grid are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. The Warriors learn some of that split action that they run offensively and bring it to your own team. Folks, the name is Kenny Atkinson. Every time there is a job with a young core that needs to take the next step, I always think of Kenny Atkinson. Only on SportsGrid. 
The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is The Lion's Share. Brought to you by BetMGM. All right, so uh, <laughs> we've been under a tremendous strain here today, I have to say. But I got to tell you about BetMGM's uh, first bet offer, 1500 It's the most unbelievable thing ever. How do you get it? Well, you download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or visit BetMGM.com. Sign up, deposit at least 10 into your account. Make a bet, and when that bet goes through, let's say, and you lose the bet, they're putting up to 1500 back in bonus bets in your account. So all you have to do basically is open an account, make your first bet up to 1500 If you lose that bet, they're going to fill your till with 1500 up to 1500 back in bonus bets if the bet loses. The bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. You're going to love it. Check it out at BetMGM dot com coach james young joins us every day on coast to coast to do the lion's share it was a bad night uh last night overall for us betting on game one of the nba finals coach it just was a it was a wash it was an absolute wash pharrell and it was non-competitive it was boring it was terrible it was painful it was it was a lot of things, Fro. It wasn't good. But you know who was good was Chris Tapp's Porzingis. I really thought that this guy was going to be rusty. Pharrell, he was everything but. 20 points, 6 rebounds, 3 blocks, 8 of 13 from the floor, right? 2 of 4 from 3. Everything that KP needed to do, he did. Stretched the floor, right? Took people off the bounce if he had to cutting and rim protection he was exactly what the celtics needed and that's why that's the best they've looked for l in weeks is because porzingis made them whole again last night do you think he can keep it up do you think that he can uh, are they going to play him at 20 minutes per? Do you think the cap will hold up? And do you think he's going to come out every night, including Sunday, and drop another 20 with six rebounds and three block shots and jump around and swat shots and run up and down and dunk and hang from the rim without any problems at all with that calf? Or do you think he'll level off? I think he'll level off in Dallas. I think he got hot last night. The crowd got behind him. Once he started stroking shots, it was all over but the shouting. Yeah, I think he'll be good for game two, and I'll give my play with him in a little bit. Uh, but to me, uh, once he goes to Dallas, he's going to get the uh, the Kyrie treatment, if you know what I'm saying. He'll get the booze and stuff like that. But for game two, he'll he'll be all right. At, at the end of the day, for all like, Dallas just has to defend the three-point line. Like, they were so piss poor with their three-point defense. Guys were open all over the place. I thought Luka was sloppy defensively, to say it nicely. They got to be better. But remember, Pharrell, game one against the Clippers, remember, they got their doors blown off. But then game two, they flipped the script. I'm looking for a better performance in game two. So, um, you know, I didn't think they got up in their uh, face enough. Uh, and, and I got to tell you, I thought the attitude of, we just wanted to get that one out of the way, doesn't fly for me. I heard Kyrie right out of his mouth say, we just wanted to get that game out of the way. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't play that way uh, when this is the finals. You're in the NBA finals. I think every single night matters. Like, they acted like game one didn't matter. Ah, we just wanted to get a feel for it and the, you know, the arena and the fans and, and just get that one out of the way. Now we're going to start playing. I mean, that's some bullshack is what that is. That, that is for real. And I, and I, listen, you got to look at what Kyrie says sometimes worth a grain of salt. At the end of the day, for real, if this team's going to make a run and win a championship, Kyrie's got to be much better for real. He's got to be much more aggressive. He's got to 
hunt his shots, and he can't rely on Luca. Now, obviously, uh, you know, a guy like uh, Jones Jr., he's, he's got to be uh, better, two of nine from the floor. Uh, Gafford was okay, minus 10. Uh, and then I thought Derek Lively just looked like a kid that was caught in the deer in headlights. It was his first time in the finals. He looked nervous. He breathed, he, he, you know, he got check, closed out too hard, foul, foul, foul. He'll be better. They'll be better. Pharrell, at the end of the day, if you're Dallas, you want to get a split. That's all you need is a split. They got to get the game on Sunday by any means necessary. Okay, so uh, does that mean you're going back to the well with them on Sunday? I am. Because very simply put, Pharrell, if you look at this game uh, that with the Mavericks, I'm going to take the seven and a half. Folks, it's very simply put, they got outscored by 27 points at the three-point line. Simply put, if they shoot the ball better from three, Pharrell, and they defend the three, they'll be better. They'll be more, more prepared. I think you get a bounce-back performance out of Jones. I think you get a better performance out of Kyrie. Gafford finds a way to set up foul trouble. I'm not Gafford Lively. I like the Mavs plus the points, and I actually think they're going to steal game two. Wow. You think they're going to win outright? Yes. If, I, if I'm saying Mavs in six... They're not going four straight, Pharrell. So I got to stick to my guns and think that they're going to adjust and they're going to be better. I really believe Kyrie's going to be better. I expect a huge performance out of Kyrie on Sunday night. You know, I, I, I wish I could agree with you because, uh, I, you know, I saw no signs of that. I've never seen him look worse. I haven't seen him look that bad in a basketball game in four months. And, and listen, and, and Ky- he had, did not look good. But to me, if you're Jason Kidd, you got to find a way to unlock him early and allow Kyrie to kind of take over the game early. And then from there, you go from maybe him go, taking over to Lucas. So I do like Kyrie to go over 22 and a half points uh, in game number two. I think it's the spot where I think he gets going early. Uh, I know. Under four of his last six versus Celtics. I know. 10 out of 15, right, overall. But this guy is a walking bucket. And if I think that they have a chance of winning this series, he's got to start in game two. He got the game one, boogaboo out of the system. He's going to be better. Kyrie over 22 and a half points. Well, I hope you're right uh, because uh, I can't bear to watch the Celtics kicking their ass. And Ooh. he needs to play better. And, you know, there's some people that would just say he doesn't play well there at all. He didn't play well there as a Celtic. And he has never played well there as a net. And he never played well uh, last night at all. So, and, you know, that's maybe he just doesn't play well in that building. I mean, you know, maybe there's something to be said for that. Maybe. But you know what, Pharrell? I don't care. You make all that money. You want to walk around like you're the best one-on-one player in the NBA, which you should be. Attack, attack, attack. You may not be able to get to the river KP. You got to adjust, Pharrell. Maybe that pull-up game is where he's got to get going, but I expect an ultra-aggressive Kyrie Irving, particularly in the first quarter. And then uh, Porzingis, what do you got on him for game two? Well, you said it best. He's going to be good until he goes back to Dallas. So I'm going to go with KP over his PRA of 23.5 points, 26 in his last game, obviously. And if you look at Porzingis, you know, it's not a large sample size because of his injuries, but the last, he's covered it's the last four times that he's played against Dallas, including every time getting 20 points. He's going to score. It's about the rebounds and assists. He gets just enough to get there. So tomorrow, programming note, put this on your uh, fridge or on your forehead with a Sharpie. Betting above the rim on Saturday at 1-3 to three for the fans, so you know you got to catch Coach and I. One to three Saturday, one to three Sunday. So we'll give you double doses before game uh, number two on Sunday night in Boston. We'll have two days to break it down. We'll see you tomorrow at one, Coach. Thank you. Let's hope it goes better for us in game two. I'll see you tomorrow. The Lion's Share, presented by Ben MGM. The 
the Warriors learn some of that split action that they run offensively and bring it to your own team. Folks, the name is Kenny Atkinson. Every time there is a job with a young core that needs to take the next step, I always think of Kenny Atkinson. Only on SportsGrid. The numbers might look crazy, especially depending on where you think Jared Goff falls in the National Football League. I would consider him, maybe as crazy as this sounds, a top 10 quarterback. And again, the theory behind paying your quarterbacks and your top rated players, pay them earlier. The longer you wait, it only costs you money. If you have a top flight wide receiver, pay him here. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. That was Aaron Rodgers' thing. To your quarterback in the first round. Yeah. It's a luxury pick. We don't have the luxury. We're trying to win right now. I, 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 I'm in a window right now, and you're going to say, no, we're going to plan this for the future. With a guy who had four years, four seasons ended by injury. Four. <laughs> like, Michael Penix is a walking injury. Like, what are you doing taking him in the top 10? The Bostonian versus the book. Using the parlays against one another, right, and being able to get a little bit of juice can sig, I found to be a little interesting. Believe me, all the rhombuses and parallelograms are constantly trying to search and find out those things every day. It's one of the battles that you use, you know. As you expand the menu, you encounter new battles. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. All right, uh, Davis Maddock is from Fantasy Sports Today. You can catch it on Saturday mornings on Sports Grid and all our radio affiliates as well and streaming services everywhere. Fantasy Sports Today. But you can catch him every day on Coast to Coast. You can follow him on X at Davis Maddock, M-A-T-T-E-K, M-A-T-T-E-K. And that's free. You don't have to pay for that. It's very exciting. It's a lot like the Sports Grid app. Everybody's doing it. They just won't admit it. Download the app on iOS or Android for free and you can follow your favorite hosts like davis maddock you can also watch the network on the app you can listen to the network on the app you can watch davis on with me on the app you can watch him with scoop mish tomorrow on the app it's the greatest app ever invented the sports grid app download it today all right davis soto the elbow day to day they said earlier on the show that uh, Aaron Boone even said that they might still be able to use him tonight off the bench as a pinch hitter. It's not the worst situation in the world, his elbow, but it's of some concern. And I said earlier that we're going to see over the next two weeks if there's a problem with his elbow, if his numbers start dropping off and he's not getting hits. Because this guy has been terrorizing the ball all season. He's been fantastic. And if he's injured and has a bad elbow, my guess would be an inclination would be that uh, he'd start struggling hitting if it, if your elbow's hurting. Yeah, honestly, well, I'm definitely I'm definitely with you. That's true. I think they should probably just err on the side of caution here. You don't want inflammation getting any worse. I would say, I don't give him a day, give him give him a weekend, tell him come, you know, go home, relax. To get in the sauna, get get in your cold tub, sleep in your hyperbaric chamber. Let's see if we can get this inflammation under control. You know, I, I don't know. You know, maybe have an MRI on it or or whatever because they can have Trent Grisham play instead. They can bump Verdugo up in the lineup. I mean, look, if they really wanted to get crazy, they could have Stanton play in one of the corner spots. If they really, I mean, I don't think they would, but they, they definitely, could. they definitely. They could. I, I don't think they would because Stanton is playing well enough right now that you really don't want to risk him, you know, uh, getting injured in the outfield. But it would be interesting if they did, if they decided this Dodger series was so important and they wanted to have their absolute best bats in the lineup, they that would be the way to do it, would be to have Stanton play in the field so you're not having to play, you know, one of their, one of their not as strong hitters. But, I, I mean, 
it sounds like he'll probably be okay. If I, if I was managing the situation, given how far they are ahead in that division, I'd probably have him sit this weekend, though. Yeah, Grisham hit a home run uh, the other night, and uh, there's no reason not to play him. Verdugo's been good for the Yankees, uh, yeah. you have to admit. So I think they have uh, depth in that market, so we'll see how it goes. I want to know, how is this guy, Grafal, still got his job in Chicago with the White Sox? They've lost 14 in a row. The major league record is 23. The major league record is 23. I mean, our, our friends, the Chicago White Sox, they might uh, look, they, they might be rivaling that. Now, how mad can we be at Pedro Grafal? I mean, what do, what do they expect, right? Do they have, I guess they have one for sure a bug league average guy in the lineup. That's Louis Robert. I mean, maybe Vaughn is close, but Corey Jolks as your leadoff hitter. I mean, Jolks was like a quad A guy who couldn't really crack. The Astros lineup ends up here. Nicky Lopez. Nicky Lopez batted ninth every day for the Royals and stunk. He's batting second every day for the White Sox. Gavin Sheets and Andrew Vaughn, you've got the uh, the DH and first base combination of guys who never met their Baseball America prospect ranking. I mean, they're just a, a profoundly, profoundly bad baseball team. Now, that being said, you lose 15 games in a row. I, I would anticipate as a manager – you are expecting getting that call because it's just embarrassing. I mean, it's embarrassing for everyone, really. What's wrong with the Padres? I can't figure them out either. They've lost five in a row. Uh, you know, they just are up and down like a roller coaster. I mean, we've we've said it here on the program. The Padres are are they are the worst good team of all time. I, I don't think they're a bad. Uh, I don't think they are a good bad team. I think they're the worst good team of all time they have a bunch of very strong players Cronenworth Kim Profar I mean Profar is actually having the best season of his career Tatis Machado Bogarts uh has not played because he's on the 10 day aisle and has not been that good this season they trade for Dylan Cease he's fine I mean I I suppose Jarvis and Musgrove are on the IL but really I, I just think they're a really inconsistent team that plays in a pretty tough division you know the NL West is one of the tougher divisions uh maybe maybe oh, the AL the 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 AL East is probably the toughest division but yeah I just think they're a really inconsistent team and and some of their starting pitching is horrible you know having to rely on on guys like Vasquez and stuff like just really some brutal starters how do you think the uh series will go in London with the Mets and Phillies I think, uh, I mean, look, I think that'll go pretty straightforward. I think we're going to see the Phillies kick some absolute butt. I, I know uh, our friends here at the network, a lot of them are Mets fans, and that's not the answer that they want to hear. But the the Phillies are just, I mean, they are an absolute machine. They are, they are so unbelievably uh, the best team in the NL East. So let's take a look at uh, your plays for uh, tonight, what you're going with. I see your, uh, we'll start with the Royals, but then I know you got action on the uh, game in the Bronx. Yes, yeah. So starting out here, taking Daniel Lynch, uh, the Royals' money line. Uh, I think Lynch is just a little underrated by the market. And honestly, I, I, I'm kind of surprised to see the Mariners um, favored by, by this much here with Miller on the mound. Miller has been such a fastball thrower. I actually like the under in this game as well, but we are taking the Royals money line there. And, uh, you know, sorry to the Yankees fans. I am in game one here going to be taking the Dodgers with Yamamoto on the mound. You should be able to get that right about uh, minus 120, minus 130 there on, on bet MGM. I, I think the Dodgers are pretty strong here. No Soto. We've got, uh, you know, one of the weaker uh, starter, uh, long reliever spots here for the Yankees. I, I think the Dodgers get it done in the Bronx. Screw you, Davis, trying to do that to me on a Friday, going against our bombers. Carver High is not having any of this. And then you've got a WNBA play rolling. Yeah, real quick, we've got two of the worst teams in the league. I suppose that's a little unfair to Wings, but we are taking, uh, we are going to be taking the Sparks at home here. Uh, we've got them, uh, we've got them plus three and a half, taking them at home, looking for a big Cameron Brink rebound game. She's also three blocks per game. She's been awesome. Backstabber, Matic. Go ahead. Have a miserable weekend. You and yours, Ayana.
anybody remembers that famous chip in that Tiger Woods hit at 14, long and left after he tried to go for the full flop, leaves it short, then chips in for par, goes on and wins. You know, that, you can't miss left there. And it's all you're hitting off the tee is a full iron. You're hitting full iron into the fairway, and you're hitting a 138 yard fade pitching wedge. And you can either hit it on top of a minivan or you can't. Only on Sports Grid. Uh, 1.81 goals against average, 9.20 save percentage. He's been. He's also six and two in his last eight road starts as well. The Oilers are. Um, the Oilers are a great road team. I actually think it's an advantage for them that they don't have home ice. That potentially four of the games are on the road. We've seen 56 percent of the games this year in the NHL playoffs. The road team is actually one. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. You're going a little deep bomb hunting here. We don't care that we have the one heavy favorite with Rory, a couple other guys like Fleetwood and Tagala, et cetera. You're going to go a little deeper down the board. This course, I think, is going to play a little bit more to the wedges. They have, um, what they did is they've renovated it to basically block off some of the, the bombing alleys for these guys. They've narrowed the fairways. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Gary Cole's getting ready to come back, too. I, I guess this, look, they've played great without him, but you're not going to say to Gary Cole, look, don't come back. I mean, it's a ridiculous conversation to have. They're not going to take any unnecessary chances. And look, they're at the point where they, they have a lead. They certainly are going to make the playoffs, I would say, barring some sort of complete collapse. And that's all it takes. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. I got an idea. Let's hook up with my guy that talks college football better than anybody, Rich Sermonello. Hey, Scott, last week we talked about the offensive stars, the young guys who are ready to take over offenses in college football. This weekend, let's talk about the young stars who want to stop them. Defensive, budding superstars in college football. I'll go from front to back. Let's start with the defensive line. My favorite guy in this discussion, Peter Woods, defensive lineman from Clemson, second year out of high school, 6'2", 315 pounds. Scott, I've been told that he is Christian Wilkins 2.0. I think that's going to wind up being a disparagement to Peter Woods because he's faster than Wilkins. He's stronger. He's bigger. In fact, Clemson says... He might be the fastest Clemson defensive lineman at 315 pounds. In fact, Dabo is going to move him from defensive tackle last year as a true freshman outside the defensive end to leverage his pass rushing skills. Now, second level, Tony Rojas, Penn State. Penn State, obviously known as linebacker U. Uh, Tony's going to be the next great linebacker for Penn State. Uh, He allowed Abdul Carter to move from the second level to defensive end in the offseason last year, also a true freshman like Peter Woods. You know, he he shined on film even in garbage time, special teams. He just looked like he was different. Now he gets a chance to be a starter at weak side linebacker. Scott, in the offseason, he's added 20 pounds of muscle to take advantage of this role. I think he's a 75, 80, maybe even 85 tackle guy in his first season as a starter. Now, Let's go back to the secondary cornerback, Takario Davis of Arizona. Not a household name unless your household includes NFL scouts. Scouts love him. Uh, Teams across the country loved him. He was one of the more coveted players in the portal, but decided to stay put in Tucson. He's going to help Brent Brennan in his first year as the head coach of the Wildcats. 6'4", very lean, very long, runs like a gazelle, great ball skills. 15 pass breakups last year, Scott, yet no all Pac-12 love. I think that changes in the Big 12 this year, one of the top corners in the country. And finally, I'll wrap it up with another secondary player, safety Keon Sab from Alabama. Michigan backup last year, only got about 20 snaps per game. 
yet had eight forced incompletions. Kalen DeBoer, the new head coach of Alabama, says he's got the it factor, great leader, championship kind of makeup. I think he's a worthy successor to Caleb Downs, who moved on to Ohio State. So Keon Sabin, his first chance to be a starter, I think he's going to be a stud for Alabama. My man, Rich, fabulous stuff. Nobody covers college football like Sermonello and Sports Grid TV. All right, uh, Carver High, I know you have uh, the college football playoff dates and times already. Yeah, I do have that, and I figured why not do this right after Rich uh, talking some college football. I'll slide this stuff in for you. Here it is. Of course, we start the 12-team college football playoff this year. Uh, there's your first round. Friday night, December the 20th, you get a primetime game. How about a triple header for you, Scotty? On Saturday the 21st uh, at 12, uh, at noon, 4, and 8 East. Uh, boom, boom, boom. And then you get the quarterfinals, one game on New Year's Eve, three games triple header on New Year's Day. The semis will be on the 9th and the 10th of January. And then the national championship, Monday night, January the 20th. I mean, that is just uh, delicious uh, to have a 12 team playoff now with all those heavy hitter games. I mean, it took forever, but let's dance. I think it's going to be great instead of, uh, I think, the controversial college football playoff with four teams and, uh, you know, only massive heavyweights ever have a shot at it. And then usually one or two teams always get screwed. Now, We'll get 12 teams, and if you're not one of the 12 best teams in America, you know, go fly a kite. Uh, that is how it should be. Uh, Georgia is the favorites to win uh, that inaugural 12-team college football playoff, as you see right there. Uh, they are sitting at 325. But Ohio State right underneath them, Scotty, uh, they have had uh, the most tickets and the most handle. Uh, everyone has gone to the window for the Buckeyes. I mean, they are as loaded as I've ever seen them. They're like an NFL team. They're so loaded. Like yeah. Ryan Day is not having any more of this losing to Michigan and not playing for national championships. Ohio State is going to be greased. Uh, I think so. When we come back, I'm going to get to tonight's baseball, but I got to throw you this thing with Colorado because we were talking about this the other day, and I want to hear what you say. Everyone thinks they're going to be good again. Like, everybody's going to the window for Colorado football. It's not happening. The Warriors learn some of that split action that they run offensively and bring it to your own team. Folks, the name is Kenny Atkinson. Every time there is a job with a young core that needs to take the next step, I always think of Kenny Atkinson. Only on SportsGrid. The numbers might look crazy, especially depending on where you think Jared Goff falls in the National Football League. I would consider him, maybe as crazy as this sounds, a top 10 quarterback. And again, the theory behind paying your quarterbacks and your top rated players, pay them earlier. The longer you wait, it only costs you money. If you have a top flight wide receiver, pay him here. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. That was Aaron Rodgers' thing. To your quarterback in the first round. Yeah. It's a luxury pick. We don't have the luxury. We're trying to win right now. I, 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 I'm in a window right now, and you're going to say, no, we're going to plan this for the future. With a guy who had four years, four seasons ended by injury. Four. <laughs> like, Michael Penix is a walking injury. Like, what are you doing taking him in the top 10? The Bostonian versus the book. Using the parlays against one another, right, and being able to get a little bit of juice consig, I found to be a little interesting. Believe me, all the rhombuses and parallelograms are constantly trying to search and find out those things every day. It's one of the battles that you use, you know, as you expand the menu, you encounter new battles. Game time decisions only on SportsGrid.